Yo YouTube, it's your bro Yo Elliot here, back with another vlog, back with another Q&A. And I wanna let you know that I'm doing a sort of hybrid blend thing here with the vlog and the Q&A. If you notice the past few weeks, I haven't done Yo Elliot's, right? Instead, I'm focusing on the vlog, but I wanna answer your question. So feel free to send me your question in the comments down below. Anything you wanna hear me rant on, don't mean I got the right answer, but I'll give you my insights, my opinion, my ideas, and maybe you enjoy hearing them. So today we actually start with a question from Ofer. He says, why does he take a big breath before each squat? <gasps> right, why do I take a big breath before I squat? So that's a great question. Stick around to the end of this video. I'm gonna give you my opinion on how to breathe when lifting. See you there. Today I'm working on stone shouldering. That means picking this stone up, put it on my shoulder as many times as I can. The competition weight is 220. I'm gonna use this 110 and I'm gonna go for reps today. Let's see. So answering the question without answering the question, I wanna share an analogy with you. We got started a little late today because I had somebody come check out my well and pump, right? So I get my own water from underneath my house. And one of the things that's important in order for the well to be able to bring water into my house is pressure. So the guy just checked out the pressure in my pressure tank to see if it was high enough to project that water into my house. Just imagine if that tank had no pressure in it, the water would leak. Maybe it would move slowly, but it couldn't give me what I need for running the shower, running the dishwasher, running all the things. The pressure gives that water speed. It gives that water power behind it so that it could put water in my house. Think about that as it relates to breathing. What does pressure create? Hey, are you enjoying this video? Do you enjoy any of my videos? Do you enjoy watching this? Then do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share with your friends and let them know. Yo E is back doing strong man Q and A's and all the thing that make us stronger, right? So hang out. So you might even notice, even while I'm doing these stones, before each rep, you might hear, I'm taking a deep breath. By taking that deep breath, I pressurize my body so that I can explode real powerfully. It's interesting if you watch Strongman John Bruni or even old videos of Franco Colombo, the bodybuilder. Both of them have this trick where they would blow into a, uh, one of these like bags that you put water in, like ice, wa ice bags, ice sacks or something, or like a, like a kickball, and they blow into it. The more pressure that they could build in, the more they could push out until they pop that ball. Check that out. Ask, look on YouTube and look for, uh, I think Franco Colombo used to do that. He would blow into a bag and explode it because he knew how to pressurize his body to such a degree that he would push that air, air out through his mouth that it could pop that ball. That's powerful breathing. You may even also notice some martial artists will do this exercise where they'll lay on their back or you know other sports and then they will fill up and then they'll allow somebody to drop a medicine ball boom on their belly boom 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 when the body's pressured that way pressurized that way you could take hits to the body right and i'm sure if you guys are boxers you might know right like if you bear down you could take those hits but if you're if you're flaccid right you let all your air out it's much easier to be knocked around. Breathing pressurizes the body, but there's a way to do it right. It's called a Valsalva maneuver. We'll talk about it later.
so dude who asked the question was probably uh, referring to my last heavy front squat workout. Because I follow an undulating periodization, I'm not doing heavy front squats today. I'm going a little bit heavier on my ATG split squats. But as I'm warming, warming up, you start, you'll notice I'm not doing the pressurizing, right? I'm getting pressurized spit on the camera. Um, I'm not pressurizing because the weight, the intensity is too low. There's no, there's no necessity for me to brace my body, stiffen my body because the weight is too, or is light enough for me to just be relaxed with my breathing. So with the type of breathing you saw me do when I was maxing out on my front squat last week, that's only relevant when weights or intensities are high enough that I need to stiffen my core so that I'm not wobbling all over the place or buckling under the pressure. doing I kind of thought of as a mixture between knees over toes and gota training you can check both of those out on YouTube they're all really good for developing the lower legs for athletes the thing is with knees over toes it's a matter of getting up onto the toes and getting the knees over your toes right but with the gota training that I found most useful in the videos I've watched is this idea of bringing the inner ankle up right and this is the guy I don't remember his name that makes the videos he studied what videos of the greatest athletes over and over again in these track their biomechanics and one of the things that he asserts he says high inner ankle bone he says they all have a high inner ankle bone and it makes sense right because a lot of us most of us myself included have collapsed arches right and if you're clapped your arches are collapsed first of all you, you're not in that spring of your foot and you're more prone to injury so he just says you know whenever you're doing anything I think he sells a board that's kind of like two of those together like that and he suggests doing squats with your high ankle bone. I figured that high ankle bone, knees over toes, plus instability, probably a really good squat to throw in every once in a while. You would do those? So I'll do that and do that. exercises that we do like squats and deadlifts and some of the strongman moves that you see me do as well require a tremendous amount of intra-abdominal pressure and just like the analogies I gave you earlier with, earlier with regard to the pressure tank being able to pressurize that water so it could pump it into my house or even when you watch uh, Franco Colombo before build pressure in his body and be able to push out to such a degree they could pop that boom balloon building up that pressure in your body allows you to stiffen. And that's really important because you don't want to be collapsing and falling and folding all over the place when you got a weight on your back or weight over your head. But there's a right way to do it. And if you look into it, there's something that's called the Valsalva Maneuver. The Valsalva Maneuver is a practice by which you fill your lungs, right? And it's, it's strange because filling the lungs a lot of times feels like filling the belly, right? So if I'm going to fill my lungs, and drop my diaphragm down as low as it possibly can be, I'm going to have to expand my belly. Right? So as I expand my belly, or as I drop my diaphragm, my belly is expanding. It means I'm filling my lungs. And so as you fill your lungs, and then, right, you, draw, you fill the belly up, you fill the lungs, and then brace. So it's a filling up, but then a bracing by pulling in, and then you're stiff, right? Because you just imagine like a balloon. You fill a balloon, right? Fill a balloon, fill a balloon, fill a balloon, tie it up. But then if you squeeze it, right, you just push it together, there's even more pressure. So it's even stiffer. And so the way we do it is by filling up and then drawing in. And a lot of times, especially when I'm doing deadlifts, I'm doing a whole lot of drawing in. Now, when the weight is in front of you or down below, for me, it's easier to 
use my transversus abdominis or thoracolumbar fascia, right? The God's natural weight belt. We have a weight belt to draw that in and stiffen it just like that balloon. Another question showed up the other day though. Somebody asked me, hey Elliot, aren't you check trained? Why do you wear a belt? Well, the fact is that if I axial load, if I put something over my head or I put something on my shoulders, I just don't have the, intra the strength to compress against that intra abdominal pressure while maintaining good posture, mainly because of old injuries. I have way too much tension on this side related to that side, and then I end up twisting. So just like I told you with regard to the balloon, when you squeeze in, there's more pressure there and it's more even pressure. A lot of power lifters, if you're a power lifter, you know this, you know how to use a weight belt properly. What they'll do is fill up the air, right? And then push the belly into the belt. So if you get this belt real tight and you and then push your belly into the belt, you're really stiffening. One of the mistakes, a lot of people don't know how to use a belt. That's the thing, the belt, the belt is there to stabilize, but the best way to use the belt is to push your belly into the belt so that you're filling up this space. So you want to suck in, push out into the belt, and then you really got a lot of stability here down below and within the core. So do a little research, do a little practice, do a little uh, testing on your own. I will add this one caveat, something I forgot to say. There's a tendency, even in myself, to hold the breath up high, right? I emphasize drawing, you know, filling up the belly and drawing down low, but a lot of times when I'm just being aggressive or I'm just not thinking about it or I just want to get after the weights, what I'll do is this. And I'll try to hold it in my face. That is a wonderful way to break blood vessels in your face, in your eyes. You ever seen power lifters with blood coming out their nose? Literally, I feel like my head's gonna explode. Not a fun thing to engage in, nor the best way to do it. So you wanna almost focus if you can, right? Sometimes it's so intense you just can't do anything. Focus if you can on keeping your face relaxed, right? As opposed to, and you'll get a lot more out of it and you won't get dizzy and pass out. So I hope that helps, dude. Until next time, done.